Hello, everyone. We're happy to be here at CES 2024 to share the story between LiDAR and artificial intelligence in transforming automotive safety and autonomy. My name is Ashley. I sit on Luminar's communications team, and I'll be moderating this fireside chat. Join me in welcoming to the stage Luminar's Director of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning, Annie Guan, and Ben Levin, Director of Engineering and Head of Automotive and Computer Vision at Scale AI. Let's go yeah. ahead and have yeah. a Thank seat. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Ashley. Yeah, nice Thank to be here. Yes. Thank you for joining us. So um, let's just start this off with our first question. So can you answer, how is artificial intelligence used in automotive safety and autonomy today? Um, some follow-ups. So what are the applications that are critical now and which are growing in importance in the future? Sure. Um, yeah, so for automotive safety, um, AI with LiDAR technology plays a really crucial role by anticipating and preventing the potential collisions before they happen. And we showcase this capability at our CS Proactive demo. So uh, where we actually use the AI and the LiDAR technology to detect the dummy pedestrians on the road, as well as the small objects. And then the vehicle then take a preemptive action, such as auto uh, automatic emergency uh, steering, as well as the em automatic emergency braking um, to avoid the collisions. In the um, autonomy space, um, so the AI is used for advanced object detections, uh, classifications, motion planning, and predictions. So in both cases, it is absolutely critical to have uh, high accuracy 3D information um, so that work for both during the day and at night. Um, LiDAR is fundamental in achieving uh, this, limita this ach achieving this and it overcomes the uh, limitations that are faced by other sensors such as camera and radar. Um, so looking to the future, uh, just like a chat GPT is using the uh, foundation model, uh, the transform-based foundation model for the uh, natural language processing, the automotive safety applications as well as the autonomy applications can benefit that foundation model in a multi-task, end-to-end approach. Uh, so in essence, is, uh, so we take a raw point cloud and it's able to generate the collision relevancy information for everything in the scene. So as compared to the traditional method, you will take the point cloud and then go to the traditional stage of the um, perception, prediction, and motion planning. Um, looking to the future, I think the end-to-end -end multitask network is really uh, becomes important, which is take the point cloud and directly generate the um, collision information, as well as the, for example, the ego vehicle in the autonomy, uh, ego vehicle trajectory in the autonomy space. So, um, yeah, so Ben, would you like to um, comment? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, starting off, I think from a, the scale perspective, we were really work across the industry with everyone from the L4, L5 robo taxi partners to OEMs and tier ones who are trying to do mass autonomy deployment. And for sure, your question was about AI applications. I think everyone in automotive is deeply invested in preventing accidents, increasing safety, and saving people time. And it really comes down to a few perception applications that everyone cares about. So the first one is, what are the other objects on the road? Where are they going and what are they doing? And I think for this, there's a bunch of different AI approaches. The most common one I see now is something we'd call fusion. So using both camera and a 3D sensor, primarily a LiDAR, maybe a radar, to get a ground truth estimate of where other road actors are. Uh, the second core task of all these autonomy systems is space. Where can I drive and where can I not drive? And there are a bunch of different uh, AI approaches to that. There are things you can do to measure lanes. You can just look at lane markings, but now more and more each vehicle is creating a live 3D map of its environment with free space, drivable spaces, where it should yield and where it can be relative to everywhere else on the road. And what's actually really exciting about these tasks is the tasks stay the same, but the methods are evolving very quickly. So now, uh, Annie mentioned uh, you know, foundational models. I think that is so core to where AI applications are going. 
we used to have very specific models. Each model would do a specific type of road actor. You'd have a, a model just to do animals, and you'd have a different model just to do lane lines, and you'd try and sort of stitch them all together. With the foundational models that I know Luminar and Scale are both investing in and we're creating these data loops around, they could do many different applications, which means that they're more robust and they're faster to deploy in new environments. You know, looking forward to the future, I, I do think the two buzzwords in the industry right now, they're not a secret, right? It's foundational models and it's end-to-end. -end. So it's bringing that data from just the perception stack into AI applications through prediction, planning, even controls to make the whole vehicle AI operated instead of with you know, AI vision plus rules operated. And for that, I think it's just really exciting to see where the industry will go. We're working on all sorts of stuff, including like generative AI approaches to holistic scene understanding. The reality is that's not on the road today and it's still in the lab. And uh, I think we're gonna see which parts of the stack it ends up taking over. Wow, amazing. Lots of activity. <laughs> so um, this one's for Annie. How is Luminar using AI technology to advance proactive safety and autonomy? Yeah, so at Luminar, um, we developed the foundation, um, the AI foundation model, uh, the LiDAR perception foundation model. It's a single model um, that's fine-tuned for multi-task perception. So it can be used for classify and localize dynamic objects, as well as the, uh, the crucial um, uh, features such as the uh, road surface and lane markings. Um, so by leveraging the inherent information that captured in the 3D point cloud, we can achieve a much higher accuracy than if we want to uh, infer this information from the camera only images. Um, so this foundation model runs on the automotive grade SOC and can detect objects um, as far as 250 meters or within uh, 50 milliseconds, so which is uh, very essential for the automotive safety applications uh, because life-saving automotive uh, safety applications require both high confidence scores and uh, rapid reaction time. Um, so of course, uh, changing this kind of foundation model requires a large amount of high quality and labeled data. And this is where we partner with Scale AI to provide us the high quality labeled data across various ontology. Um, so Ben, you work with not just Lumina, but across um, the automotive industry. Um, you have very unique perspective on this. Can you provide us an uh, overview of the data landscape and uh, how Luminous AI engine fit into this uh, picture. Yeah, yeah, of course. When it comes to the data landscape, I think you know, there are many different details in the approach, but the core thing everyone wants to do is do what we call create a data engine. And so that's a schema where you have some fleet of vehicles on the road. Those vehicles have machine learning models on them. They're actually gathering on the edge the right data to further improve model performance. And that changes over the life cycle of development. For very simple ADAS features, you can sort of just go out and drive and collect whatever data. As you get into understanding other road users, dealing with long tail edge cases, letting the driver take their hands off the steering wheel and then their eyes off the steering wheel, the data needs explode not just linearly but exponentially. You know, think about really important scenarios for you as a driver. Like if a deer jumps out in front of my car, it is incredibly important that my car is gonna know a deer is there. How many thousands of hours do you have to drive around before you see a, in the wild an example with AI training data? And so the most important thing about the, the data landscape and how it's evolving is this transition from doing a few tens of vehicles or a hundred vehicles that are collecting data on behalf of the company, which is where all these programs start, to getting large-scale deployed fleets out on the road with as rich sensors as possible. And I think that's actually really an underestimated point. The sensors typically on these uh, data collection vehicles, they always have 3D, they always have 360 degree LIDAR. They're sort of set up to collect ground truth. It's hard if you just have cameras on the road to make that useful for a machine learning pipeline because you don't know where objects are in 3D and in the end 3D is what matters. I mean, no one cares if you can detect the pixels of the deer if you end up smashing into it. 
So that's the biggest change, is like how do you work with those massive amounts of data coming off the fleet? You need a few things. You need great data backhaul infrastructure as a baseline. You need great edge deployment models, and you need a link between them. Uh, so you actually need the people developing the AI and continuing to progress to be able to go out into the fleet and do targeted triggers for the data that matters most to them to keep improving performance. Um, so I think that's that's what's so exciting about working yeah. with Luminar, right? Is like you you actually are leaders in deploying these large fleets of data. You have tons of data yourself. You're getting more and more, and ultimately it's those companies that can get those sensors into production on a very large scale that will have an unfair advantage as they develop the next generation of autonomy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, what are some of the benefits of Luminar's LiDAR data in training these AI programs for classifying and identifying objects? Um, so there are two key benefits. Um, uh, when we talk about the, um, it comes to the Luminar LiDAR data. So the number one is, um, so for the automotive safety and with, as the autonomy, so LiDAR has been used uh, as a ground truth source for specifically for labeling the camera and the um, LiDAR data, I mean radar data, sorry, in order to train the models uh, to detect objects in 3D space from uh, just 2D information. Um, so second, tra transform a large foundation model. They really need to have a substantial amount of 3D uh, data. So um, in both scenarios, Luminar data is very uh, beneficial. So we expect Luminar sensors to deploy to one million vehicles, um, production vehicles, including Volvo, Mercedes, uh, Polestar, um, as well as the autonomous tracking companies such as the uh, Kodiak, um, Gatik, plus AI on the road in the coming years. So this fleet is going to have a huge amount of 3D data and creating a rich data set that for both ground truth as well as the foundation, training the foundation model. Um, so speaking of the foundation model, so Ben, I think um, uh, with Skill AI's recent announcement of the foundation model for the automotive space, um, how are you seeing the data uh, needs evolve and uh, how much of data to change for this next generation foundation model that will come from the deploy fleets? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I'll just be very open. We don't know how much data these models need because we keep throwing more data at them and they keep getting better. <laughs> uh, you know, looking at the evolution of AI, there's kind of three variables that need to grow in parallel, right? One is how much compute can you throw at these models? The second is uh, how many different data sources can you have in these models? And the third is what's the data volume? And as all three of those variables grow, the model's capability tends to grow very quickly, but the growth curve needs to be exponential, not linear. So, uh, you know, imagine that we're, we're sort of on the road now. If I was running a, a driving program and I have 50 data collection vehicles, uh, to actually make these foundation models work and keep improving at a constant rate, you could think, well, okay, next year I need 500 and then 5,000 and then 50,000 vehicles driving around for me. Like, it doesn't work, right? And so what you talked about, uh, Annie, is the million Luminar vehicles on the road. I do think that's the order of magnitude of data that we'll need to actually keep improving the models. Uh, of course, not everything will get collected. We'll have to be filtering for specific edge cases and areas of interest. But we are talking there about three orders of magnitude more vehicles being able to collect data. And that should let everyone go much, much faster if they have that, that data loop set up. And what we've seen, I mean, as scale deploys these models, which I think we have a bit of advantage of because we do work with so many people, what's interesting is we knew the models were going to be much more flexible, and we knew that they were going to be able to do more tasks. What wasn't obvious to start with was that they would actually outperform purpose-built models. And so uh, it's, it's sort of a have your cake and eat it too, right? We get a better result by leveraging more data, and the model can do more, and it's more robust across different domains. Of course, getting that model from the data center onto the car, that's a whole other thing. That's not my business. Right. But uh, I can't imagine that's not where the industry is going, right? That's not where the perception stack is going over the next five years. Amazing. So 
we're at time. I want to thank you both for joining me today and providing some amazing knowledge to our attendees. Um, do you have any final remarks that you want to leave with everyone here at CES? So um, Lumina's mission is to um, save 100 million lives uh, and a trillion hours with the next 100 years. Mm -hmm. um, the integration of LiDAR technology and AI, I think it's fundamentally transforming the how we approach the automobile safety as well as the autonomy. Um, I believe with these two technologies, we are driving towards a future with fewer accidents and the more smoothing and more efficient travel. Um, so I'm very excited to be part of this uh, journey. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for my part, I, I'll echo what you yeah. say. I think the most exciting thing for me personally is always to actually save lives and save time. And what I'm most excited about is getting all of these technologies, you know, outside of the lab and onto the road. I think at CES, you can really see the transition over the last few years from talking about, you know, really exciting R&D efforts to how do we deploy this to millions of vehicles. And what I, I think is really going to accelerate that even are the advances we're seeing in AI and in sensors. And so, you know, Annie, I know we've talked a lot about this, but we should all sort of be prepared to keep raising the bar on ourselves, to keep thinking about how we reach the next level of autonomy and how we do that in these learning loops with very large fleets mm -hmm. deployed. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be exciting. I think I'm already yep. excited by CES, and it's going to be exciting next few years. Come back in a couple of years, we'll probably be talking about how we have you know millions of vehicles on the road, but we need even more data for the next application and so forth. Right. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Yes. Thank you.